Welcome my friends back to Manor Lords. We're into year three of our village. We have been able to build up to a medium sized village. In the last video we set up our manor house, our tax collector. We're humming right along. We have the beginnings of the sheep pastures and we were able to bring in our first harvest of wheat. And we're having some growing pains in terms of converting the wheat into bread. It has to get threshed at the farm into um, grain which then gets milled into flour, which then gets baked into bread. But we have, as you can see, maxed out pantry levels at all of these. It's just not getting transported. So right now the buildings are standing idle, uh, which is problematic. Here, let's see. You convert flour into bread. So if I go to people, the baker is transporting. What are you transporting? Converts flour into bread. What are you carrying? You don't look like you are carrying anything, my guy. Baker, task, getting food supplies from the market. Hang on, so are you buying your family bread or are you actually helping with the production values here? It's an enormous difference. <laughs> but the snow is clearing away. Uh, we still have food for two months. We still have a reliable income from the hunting of the wild animals. Looks like this herd has been able to get up to 27. This one kept down at 20. We might be able to assign an extra hunter if the animal populations begin to expand a little bit more. But right now we're going to try and keep it. We're trying to keep the herds above 20, which gives them size to be able to repopulate. Okay, it seems to me like our supply chain is just all mucked up with having the granary so far away from the windmill and the... Um, I just saw efficiency up on the windmill. Now, is that because of wind? Hang on. Or is that because I just set down the pantry? I think the windmill actually does process faster based on being up on hills and whatnot. Um, but it's doing fine. The, the, the hiccup is the communal oven. And I was noticing that people were carrying flour over here to the granary and then from here back and then the bread back again. And so hopefully, low on food, try building hunting camps. Forager at the berry post, we don't have any berries. Granary's under construction, communal oven. We have the capability to bake the bread, we're just not doing it. Okay, time to put on the focus and get things in line, otherwise we starve. Okay, we have taken dramatic action. <laughs> we have deleted the granary over here. I felt like that was throwing off all the locations of the other buildings. It seems like it could make sense to have your farm out at one section and then have the granary in a central location with the windmill around it and the communal bakery around that. We didn't do that. We put the bit windmill next to the farm, which also has its merits. I mean, obviously having just everything closer together is better, uh, but I think that this is gonna help us out quite a bit uh, with people taking granary trips and then being able to alleviate the um, mat overflow on the pantry here. I feel like, are you guys not? You're procrastinating and you're going to church. Task ID 52 is going to church. <laughs> they just haven't named it yet. So the bakers are doing nothing, waiting. Why can't, why can't the baker carry the bread away? Maybe I should just uh, fire both bakers until the pantry is uh, cleaned out. Could be another good idea. I could assign them both to the granary uh, to be able to transport the bread away. And then I would kind of like to set up a new little market with a food stall over on this side. Maybe that's better than having to carry the food stall over here, but I've never seen, I don't know, the, the food, actual selling out of the food stalls, that doesn't feel like it is that important. It feels like the important thing is that food is in the granary. Okay, I think we are finally unwinding the bottleneck. The communal oven is no longer completely backed up. We only had one person working there for a little while. We're now up to two. Uh, we have this granary. <laughs> Apparently the pantry limit doesn't exist. They just can keep on overflowing. 658 stored out of 500 capacity. I'm building a second one over here because I thought it would be important if it overflowed, but apparently not. Maybe this will just screw with my supply chain even more, but on the plus side, it will allow me to sign, assign even more workers designated to transporting food around. 17 bread in here. We have so much wheat, flour, and grain. And we have yet more harvest coming in. I basically cut the farm down to just a skeleton crew because we don't need more stuff coming in. Your pantry is maxed. The windmill pantry is everything is maxed here. So honestly, 
<laughs> we could cut them down to just a one, but I'm gonna leave it at, at two and then hope that the rest can start to work out all the kinks to be able to get bread flowing to the tables. We may even need a second communal oven to be able to bake through everything. Or we can just keep on assigning more bakers. I mean, we're not going to build another one until we actually get ah, food consumed. People can just come here and consume it directly. But you are... What are you measuring? Is the food... Maybe it is actually measuring the food that is here at the pantry. Anyway, everybody come in. Just eat it right out of the bakery. Fresh out of the oven is the best way to get it anyway. 700 out of 500. All right. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. This granary. That's starting to take on a little bit. Okay. I'm going to leave all the workers hubbed out of this granary for now, though. And we're coming into the summer months. We've been kind of extending the neighborhood along this side to be able to get more workers around this hub. Uh, it seems to be where we are employing most of our labor in the process of making grain. But we still have space around the, the rest of the map here to be able to extend to. And it's just that I don't want to encroach too much on this territory of the wild animals. Let's see, do we get the, the boundaries? Maybe if I go to construction... There we go. Yeah, so we could we could add a number of houses over here to be able to extend our population. I, I, only having one month of supplies left makes me very hesitant to expand the population, but at the same time, and I love this, I've got the the vegetable gardens updated over here. They had to have very large plots of land to be able to grow the gardens, but it would be nice to be able to get that extra source of food when they do produce. As long as the bakers stay busy, We'll be good. It looks like we actually could hit the breaking point of adding an extra oven and a couple more houses. So let's go ahead and play for that. Go back to construction. The burgage plot. Yeah, go ahead. You can sync up. I love how it will automatically adapt to the other buildings that you have placed down. Let's see. Let's let's test uh, the limits here. Okay, you're only going to give me one plot? Ah, I understand why. It's because he's taking this as the front of the plot. What if I take the roadway here as the front of the plot then are you able to divide no it's too well okay so if the shape is a little irregular it does not divide into multiple plots very cleanly what if i do something like this can i get two yes and if i do something like this nope okay it doesn't like my psycho shapes that's fair enough oh how is this i got bigger but i can't expand i get smaller come on where was it pixel perfect found it Odd, but uh, I'll accept it. Giving the game a pass on a lot of things like that. <laughs> okay, with those two new families, then we should be able to add people to work a second communal oven. Put this down. Come on, people. Get to work. Efficiency up. I guess the efficiency of the windmill is better the more bakers there are? I, I don't understand. I do love our little beginning sheep herd. Uh, we're still trying to expand it right now. We have, or I guess if I select over here, 6 of 16. We're trying to get up to 10. We can do a check-in on how the livestock traders are going. Let's see, are you... No, you are not transporting. Okay, we put it on hold, actually, because I wanted to be able to trade for tools. So what are you guys doing? Just transporting? What are you doing? Give me the tooltip. Tooltip. Transporting leather. Okay, so they're just trying to sell leather right now. Um, I guess we can let the regional wealth pick up and then look to be able to buy the tools and then look to be able to buy the extra livestock with six sheep. How many, uh, how, what quantity of wool do we have? We have 28 wool. That could be enough if we let it take up to be able to start turning out cloth and then have clothes and this is what I wanted to see these people very short trips very efficient yes this is exactly what I wanted look at this the food supply is going down granary is holding all the bread this is it this is it we finally unwound the kinks is the mill the same way hang on windmills all backed up and the farm I keep selecting people which is why it zooms in you have to be careful because the people selector overrides everything else. The farm is actually starting to run lower on grain. Amazing. Are we bringing in any of the fields for harvest? Yep. 
Looks like crop harvest is happening. Awesome. I'm gonna leave it at two. We're in no way, in a, in no form, <laughs> at a pinch for wheat. It's the end of the supply chain that is completely bottlenecked. And that's even with three full-time bakers right now. Cranking things out and a fully staffed granary. Um, everybody, you guys should be taking flour to the oven. If you're doing something other than taking flour to the oven, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh dear. I guess our burst of farming was very uh, unleveled. How would you say it? Unequal? Maybe there, if we could have dipped our toe in just a little bit more, had a smaller harvest, been able to iron out the, um, the supply chain a little bit earlier, we might have been able to avoid some of this. This whole year is all ironing out the kinks. Okay. Do I want bakers here as well? I mean, if you can get the flour to be able to run it, I suppose so. I'll add a person. Add a family. We have six unassigned families. Seems pretty good. We have this space. I would like to add yet another plot here. Let's go back to the um, village life. The plot. And then add me. Connect me. Sync up like so. It's too small. It sure doesn't look too small. Construction cost of two. Do we not have... What is what is the problem here? Oh, there it was. We got it. And I like the angle. The, how we were able to get it to, to fill that zone. Okay, okay. Now we're zooming. Look at this. We've got flour flowing in. Quick trips from the granary. Hey, Update. We have six total families out of... 26 in the community just baking bread um, If that's not enough Then this seems like it's gonna be all out of whack Because <laughs> you also have to pe have people work in the windmill and the farm and the granary So really I mean all four of these people are mostly just feeding the ovens, which is crazy Hopefully we're able oh here we go. We're starting to make we're gain grounding for we're gaining ground for the first time food up to three months after it had been one forever Oh, and we're in the middle of summer. So we fired up the Woodcutter's Lodge also to be able to get us more fuel. And now I think we can finally entertain uh, the ideas of using the wool that we have been gaining from our flock to be able to get, where are you? Check me over to industry, the weaver workshop, converting wool into yarn. Let's get a weaver's workshop positioned somewhere up here. Yeah, this seems good. We have the tannery right over here, and we have the storehouse right over here. So this is actually an excellent spot to be able to hold hold our industry. Let's grab that. This field right now has been marked out because this is the most fertile area for barley, uh, which we'll be able to then refine into mead or um, beer for our tavern. Is mead... Meat is like honey beer. Does that also use wheat? Help me out in the comments. Oh yes, our food supplies are skyrocketing. And now they're actually coming up even with our fuel supplies. That is scaring me. Let's add some additional houses here. And then we're going to be looking to get extra firewood production. Yeah, set me up like so. We could rebuild this field to get it uh, maybe a second smaller field so you have a little bit of crop rotation. We've got options. We've got options. And where are you? Woodcutter's Lodge. Uh, yeah. Work a little bit harder over here because our families need fuel for the winter. I'm surprised it's going... Is it going down because we've been expanding our population? Or are we actually consuming fuel somewhere else. I know there are some buildings that do consume fuel, like if we go to industry and you look at, say, the um, the smithy, then you use iron slabs and fuel to craft tools. And then you've got the whole, the process of crafting tools is crazy. Like, it seems way better to trade for it right now <laughs> with the way they have the economy balanced, because to be able to make tools, you have to mine the iron, 
smelt the iron ore into ingots and then combine the ingots with fuel to be able to make tools. Meanwhile, the trade post, they just have to walk out and come back and spay, uh, spend six gold, six silver to, to be able to just purchase a tool. There we are. The Weaver's Workshop is established. We'll add this in. That means we are so close. We just need... Ooh, our food variety is actually bottoming out. No. Uh, we're doing as much as we can to be able to keep the food variety high, but we're mostly going to be living on bread, and that's unavoidable for now. Some people have their vegetable gardens, and then we've also got some people keeping goats, some people keeping chickens, and we have our hunters um, with two different herds of wild animals. I feel like that should be enough to get us the food variety, but I guess it's not getting to every house right now. Ugh, rough. All right, things have finally flipped. Now, fuel is the bottleneck. Food is uh, just cruising. We could probably tone things down on the communal ovens, but I want to be able to process the backlog of everything and get all the resources turned into bread. We have... <laughs> Uh, 360 units of bread as opposed to the 50 that we had before this whole uh, mess began. We should really set up a second woodcutter's lodge. Where would we like to get them working? They could work on the outskirts of the farm over here, be able to start clearing away some of this timber that we want to um, have open for fields in the future anyway. So let's go construction, gathering, woodcutter lodge. You don't need to uproot any trees in your establishment, please. Just get you in here. Yeah, and then get a little meandering trail, come back in and connect to the village. Would we like to extend a little bit of the, um, the housing out here? Sure, we could do that later. We have four unassigned families right now. That's a ratio that I'm fairly happy with. Um, maybe getting an extra one here would be good and then we can get these families to work on the new woodcutter's lodge. So let's go ahead and set that up. Take me to village life. Take me to the housing plot. And then extend the neighborhood. Get you up like this, running up the hill. I hope it's not too steep. Ooh, we could get a triple, but it is too steep. Too steep all the way around. What if it's shorter? All right, it looks like it's gonna be finicky. Okay, we can actually fit two houses over here. We'll do that instead, and then we'll be able to add the two workers and keep the maintain the balance of the rest of the econ. I really love how the game adapts the roadways and the pathways to high traffic areas. Before we just had these tiny little paths, but then in higher traffic areas, uh, right around houses, right around the main trade routes, they expand, they become more defined, they have definitive ruts. It is gorgeous, and you also get um, I guess it's especially noticeable here in the market, these little pads of convenience. Uh, these ones look weird based on how the market was set up, but uh, the game does have that kind of mechanic. And it's also got these little pads of convenience over here to the hitching post where everybody comes in to be able to get the oxen and take them out for their labors. Oh, we finally have plenty of regional wealth. That means we can go back to expanding our sheep herd. And we have the tools as well. Fantastic. Okay, so let's add a livestock trader. And maybe remove one of these workers. I think that we have the, the workforce is a little expendable right now. We do want to add on to the woodcutter's lodge over here. Get at least one person working this. If we see the months start ticking down faster, we'll add more. We can adapt on the fly here. We're getting these houses set up. You know what? With these houses coming in, add me. There we go. So we have three wheat fields that we've settled on to be able to play around with crop rotation. So effectively, two of them are ready for harvest every year, and one of them is going to be allowed to fallow uh, to regenerate the soil. Uh, that's the only that's the extent of the crop rotation that we're playing around with you do have alternate crops that you could place in the game doesn't have any tool tips about them allowing you to rotate the crops and then regenerate for different types of crops and the soil is already terrible for the crops that are not um wheat right now in this area so 
doing a crop rotation of different types of crops right now doesn't seem to work very well, but just letting the field fallow is, it seems to be the way that they want you to go. But then next year, our goal is going to be getting finally barley coming in over here. Barley and then fallow and then barley, something like this. But right now the priority on this field is zero, so the, the farmers will not come out and work it. We can do whatever edits that we want uh, in the meantime. My, my, my. We are growing quite steadily. We're actually halfway through our time limit allotted to be able to complete comforts and conveniences, but I think we are going to be fine. I think we are going to be fine because if we check in at one of these houses, they have the food variety, they have the faith, clothing. I thought we were reaching the clothing variety. Is this not, not true? The Weaver's Workshop. You are creating yarn. Is the yarn just not getting distributed well enough? Or is the tannery done? Hang on, the tannery is empty. Do we not have pelts anymore? Let's check our, where would we check? Materials? We do have leather. Pelts are coming in. Leather is stockpiled. Wool is being turned into yarn. And the yarn is what is sold. Is somebody closer to the market able to pick it up? You're maxed out on leather? Is it because this clothing stall does not hold anything other than leather? Well, we may have to troubleshoot that in the next episode because um, more pressing matters is surviving the winter with enough fuel. Okay, we solved it. <laughs> it's December. It's the end of the year. It's the end of the episode. But we reached it. We built a second clothing stall uh, to be able to hold some yarn that got delivered. And now um, the plots are so close to being able to be upgraded because they're seeing food variety in the market they're seeing clothing variety in the market they're able to go to church they just need a little bit of entertainment a little bit of liquid entertainment so that is going to be coming in the next episode we're going to use this winter to plot out how we are going to set up our tavern where we're going to build it and then also our brewery to be able to craft our moonshine uh, might add a couple extra houses and man it is beautiful here in the winter but thank you guys for watching stay tuned for the next episode absolutely loving playing through the manor lords demo here we're gonna try and push it to the max and be able to see everything that we can wring out of it here no saves so it's a one long marathon session if you enjoyed the video then leave some love on it till next time thank you guys for watching and have a good one